People ask me if Ayrton is my idol. Another magnificent drive by the Brazilian Ayrton Senna. For me, he was the best. Ayrton Senna wins the 1989 Monaco Grand Prix. He could do pretty special things there on this track and uh, he was considered the king. 1987, 89 and 90. I never remember of Ayrton doing a race weekend. I really remember of Ayrton on the podium and uh, felt very, very nice to be in the same place where he was so many times. Six times a winner here. Ayrton Senna crosses the line. We're still the only two Brazilians who won in Monaco. And the Monaco Grand Prix finishes with victory for Ayrton Senna. I don't want to be Ayrton. I never wanted to be Ayrton. I want to be Bruno and uh, achieve what I can achieve. Bruno, I know that when you started your career, there was such a buzz because there was a Senna name back racing again. Does that make it a, a hindrance or a help or increase the pressure on you? Well, in the beginning it was quite hard for me to cope with people's expectations uh, over the surname. Everybody was comparing me to three-time world champion Ayrton and that was only my first year of motor racing with no experience whatsoever from go-karts. All in all, it's been an advantage. It's been great for me to have the name, to find uh, partners and sponsors and uh, it helped me a lot. Nowadays, I can cope with the pressure pretty well. It stops me in my tracks. It looks exactly like Ayrton Senna. It's so relaxing here in Monaco, but I suppose at the moment, the way things have maybe gone the first few races, you need to be able to relax. It's been a tough start for your Formula One career. Yeah, it's been quite tough. I never imagined it would be easy. At the moment, I'm really looking forward to going to the races and driving the car. And I think uh, good things are, are to come, not in the immediate uh, near future, but um, not too far away from now. What are those good things? Have you had to reassess your targets for the year? Um, yes, uh, of course, now, especially in the beginning of the season, we uh, started the year thinking about competing against the other new teams and maybe sometimes finishing on the points, but we're a bit far away from that now. And it's a tough situation in our heads because you're, tell you're told to push, but you cannot push. And, uh, you know, you always want to push. But uh, mistakes happen when you're on the limit and especially in the beginning. I know there's different types of pressure, but it was an unusual crash for you to have in Barcelona. Just tell us about what happened. Yeah, it was um, quite interesting actually because I started uh, quite well. The race on the first few corners, I made uh, quite a few positions. Then I made a mistake, unfortunately, but uh, came back to the garage. I was a bit apologetic to the guys and uh, my engineer said, you know what, I'm quite happy that you were uh, you were pushing like crazy because he realized that sometimes you just make mistakes. So I got uh, a good support from the team, which is quite important when you make mistakes. And uh, I plan to keep on pushing, but make the mistakes uh, not happen again. And what about this race? This is the jewel in the crown. You won here in GP2. Well, I'm very excited to drive here, always. It's a great track. It's quite interesting to be um, a street circuit that has a good flow to it. I have some good history here as well, of course, that uh, makes me quite happy. But I think this, is, this could be the most difficult race for us to um, cope with traffic. We have to be looking a lot in the mirrors and it's a bit um, more dangerous than in other circuits because there's a lot more uh, dirt off the line here. So we don't want to go off the line to let them pass. They don't want to go off the line to pass us. So it's going to be a bit of a fight.